Hello guys, in the last electronics related video we took a look at uh, creating the Gerber files for the version 4.2 control board that we recently made a few changes to. So in today's video we're going to take a look at uploading your files to a PCB manufacturer and take a look at the steps that are involved in getting your PCBs professionally manufactured and assembled. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. They are a company specialising in PCB fabrication and assembly who can fabricate your PCBs in a wide range of materials and colours including flexible PCBs. You can get a batch of 10 single or double layer prototype PCBs fabricated for as little as $5 from PCBWay. And turnaround is fast because production and technical support run 24 hours a day. Orders are shipped all over the world with DHL, so you know it'll be a fast delivery. They also have a maker community where you can share your designs or enter in the design competitions. With competitive pricing and fast delivery, I would definitely recommend PCBWay if you're designing a PCB. Okay, so we have our CAM files now and we want to try and get our PCBs manufactured. So we're over here at PCBWay's website. There's a few options here that we can get manufactured. So first one, a very simple, a basic PCB. So that's a PCB with no components soldered to it. So a blank PCB. Next thing then, an SMD stencil. So let's say your blank PCB has SMD components and you want to put a solder paste on just the pads where the components are going to be. And then you might heat that up in a reflow oven if you had something like that. So the stencil makes sure that you only put the solder paste on the pads where you want the solder paste. So you're not wasting solder paste or getting solder paste stuck on all the legs of your components. So that's why you might want a SMD stencil. Then you have our PCB assembly which is what we're going to take a look at today. And then you have other options for flexible PCBs and uh, advanced PCBs be really like high really technical PCBs maybe like a motherboard or, or something that'll be really be basically really expensive components that's a stencil in the background there by the way so we want our PCB assembly we want a quote and as you can see at the minute there's a promotion on so it's only $30 to get 1 to 20 pieces assembled so let's take a look at that see if we can get ourselves a quote so first thing we're looking at here is which of the three options we want. So turnkey is where you give PCB way the bomb. They supply all the components to match your bomb that you've specified. There's another option there where you can supply the components to PCB way. And the third option is that you supply some of the components to PCB way. So for our board, we're going to go with the turnkey option. For the board type, we'll go with a panelised PCB, so that means that the PCB is going to be positioned on a panel by one of the engineers in PCBWay, and the panel will be V-scored, so all you'll have to do is just break each of your individual PCBs out of the panel to, uh, you know, to, to get to separate them. So, assembly sides. On our uh, board, we have both sides assembled. We have the voltage regulator and a capacitor on the bottom so this is the quantity of pcbs that we want so we're going to say 20 because that's what the the offer is the number of unique parts so we know from our bomb that we have 14 unique parts that they are all smd components and that we have no true hole components but we haven't uploaded the pcb previously so we if you had for example got a sample of the PCB previously on its own you could have that number and you'd add that number in here and the next stage of the process would just be automatic well, we haven't got PCB samples previously so we'll say no here which brings us down to the PCB specification options actually sorry I skipped across this there's a additional assembly information if you need to pass on any other information to the to the manufacturer but we don't have anything at the minute so now we're down to our PCB specifications and you can get your PCBs in a single piece we can decide uh, 
paneling that that'd be if you were uploading the if you had drawn your pcbs in a panel which we didn't do so we're going to panel by pcb way uh, and that'll leave the assembly process a bit simpler and now we look at the panel requirements so we want breakaway rails because that allows us to split the pcbs so you'd be hitting yes there then the routing process so uh, you have a number of options you can have v scoring which is pretty much a, a channel in the shape of a v that's uh, put on either side of the board on the outline of your board so that there's only a very small uh, piece of fr4 in the middle left in the middle of the score so that means you can just snap the boards apart another way is where the, your final small pcbs are separated by little tabs so it'll be perfectly scored the whole way around completely see-through except for the points where the tabs are so you can just maybe snip those little tabs with a with just a, a wire snips or something like that or you could let them do both so i prefer the v score my boards are rectangular so it's pretty simple to to split rectangular boards that are v scored the next thing that we have here is the x out allowance in the panel so what that means is basically if you have a panel of small pcbs so let's say you had 30 pcbs and let's say two of them uh, don't pass inspection so pcb we would put a black x through those those are those are failed uh, pcbs however if you uh, let's say 30 is the number I think what would happen here if you say you accept that then the panel just goes on through assembly and you maybe lose those two PCBs two is quite a high number it's probably unlikely that you're gonna get uh, that many failed PCBs but if you don't accept this then instead what you do is you pay an extra 30% so basically you're paying for another 30% of the PCB so that's now you're paying for 40 PCBs but maybe your PCBs don't have any X's and you end up paying for 40 PCBs but you get 30 however if you didn't accept it and it went the other way it could go to 10 PCBs come out good well then maybe to rerun it and you'd get the, the other ones for me I'm just gonna accept it first of all I don't expect that there's gonna be uh, any huge amount of failures and I'm willing to take that risk because it's, it's only samples, it's only prototypes. It's not uh, it's not like we're making medical equipment here, we're just uh, making hobby PCBs. And now we're looking at the panels themselves or the, the design, the actual small PCB that you want to get made. So we have only one PCB design and the dimensions of it are 19.5mm long by 15.97mm wide. And again, we're going for a quantity of 20. So it's a two layer PCB, uh, that's front and top side. One layer would just be if you had the top. Four layers would be if you had a top and a bottom layer, but then inside the FR4 material, there was more layers that were kind of sandwiched in there. So you'd be doing that if you had something really complex like um, maybe a motherboard might have multiple layers but for what we're doing it would be ridiculous to be paying for a four layer board when you should be able to design it into two layers for the material then we'll just go with the standard fr4 you have a whole load of materials there um, you know you might choose a different material for noise purposes or if you were making an antenna you might want rogers or, or something else like that so for us the standard fr4 the cheapest material is going to be what we want the temperature grade then we just want the lowest one because that will be the cheapest the thickness we'll just leave it at 1.6 it's a common uh, common thickness it's quite a rigid board then so it's unlikely that when you're pulling the board out from a socket for example it's not flexing and then breaking the solder joints on the chips it should be at 1.6 it should be pretty reliable the min track space and then we have six mil that's what was set in our uh, design criteria in eagle 
so that should leave it pretty good if you did decide to design down here just be aware that the smaller you go the more expensive it's going to be uh, i would imagine they have to set up different tooling to do that because probably six mil is standard that's probably why it's the default in eagle as well again uh, same with the hole size and if you try to go smaller uh, you're going to end up uh, paying a little bit more for the board actually not a little bit more probably be quite a bit more we'll just leave the solder mask color at the standard green it's usually the cheapest probably because most boards are probably made in the green i would imagine um, but you have this range of colors here then when it comes to the silk screen uh, for the green board white usually looks good uh, i presume black you'd only use if you maybe had a yellow board or you know one of the other colors boards but for green white and probably black is probably more expensive as well gold fingers is only something you'd really consider if you are uh, making something really precision sort of a board not for the hobbyist kind of thing that we are doing just the standard uh, connections are fine then when it comes to the materials you have all these selections obviously those with gold are going to be the more expensive but they'll also be a little bit better for your solder to adhere to uh, i think this is kind of the standard now because uh, i think for well to meet the actual standards i think a lot of pcbs have to be made uh, like this for us it doesn't matter they're only hobby pcbs so you could go for uh, one of these ones that are a bit cheaper but um just be aware that uh, some of these finishes i think if you if you leave them for a period of time they, they can start to corrode certainly the if you left it at plain copper i think it could start to corrode and also you mightn't be able to solder the connections as well and whether that affects assembly or not i'm not sure but i'm going to leave it at the the standard uh, the standard surface finish anyway then we'll just leave this uh, thickness of the immersion gold a standard obviously the more gold you put in it the more expensive it's going to be and the only reason you'd be doing that is to try and get more uh, well better connection for sensitive circuits like if you were really sensitive clock signals or something like that as it says here the the, the vias are going to be done according to the gerber file you've made so don't need to worry about that and then the copper finish that's probably just the thickness of copper that's on the fr4 so just leave that as the standard you'd put a, a thick copper layer if you needed to uh, to transfer a lot of power i'd imagine um, i'd say that'd be more so than the gold connections are probably for noise but the the copper thickness is probably for uh, carrying higher currents then the final thing down here is the pcb number so that's pcb ways number for identifying your pcb during their production process so that's just going to be in the silk screen of the pcb um i don't usually worry about it i just leave it on doesn't really matter to me but if you did you could pay an extra three dollars and get rid of that so now we've all our values uh, entered let's hit calculate okay so up on the top here we have our pcb price so it's coming in at 39 dollars for the 20 pieces and build time around about three to four days so the 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 offer that's on at the minute for the assembly is 30 dollars so that's a uh, 150 a piece and then the shipping's going to be with dhl but the shipping actually looks to be free uh, going by this so our total is actually coming out to 66 dollars but just to be aware that 66 dollars that's for the manufacture of the boards and the assembly you still have to pay for your components however uh, PCB way are probably going to be able to buy the components cheaper than you would have been able to buy them if you just got the PCBs and then uh, tried to assemble them yourself so you know it's probably going to work out a little bit cheaper for the components anyway so really you're paying the $30 to get all the boards assembled save you all the time and save those inevitable mistakes where you solder two or three pins of your atmega chip together and end up messing up the board so you know thirty dollars isn't really that bad
for being able to just take your PCB and start playing straight away. So we'll hit save the cart on that. And now that we've hit add the cart we get presented with this box to upload our files. Then we can upload our bomb. And finally we can upload our centroid files. So now that we have our information uploaded all we have to do now is hit submit order now. And now when we look at our newly placed orders we can see that they are subject to audit. So someone is going to actually check our files and get back to us with a quote for the components and various items like that. Okay so now it's the next day and we can see our prices have been updated. When we look at our PCB we can see that they have created five uh, panels of four PCBs each and the price is now $42 so not much different really. And if we take a look at our assembly uh, process down below we can see that we now have our component cost added in the SMT cost hasn't changed it's still $30 because that's the offer that's running at the minute but our components are $61 so that's actually not that bad considering that each at mega 3 to 8 could be maybe $2 each so that could be $40 straight away we have uh, a whole load of other components on it including the oscillator which will be pricey enough and the voltage regulator which will be pricey enough so that's actually probably relatively cheap if we hover over the panel way thing there it shows us that our PCBs have been arranged in a 2x2 two two arrangement so that's 4 PCBs per panel and 5 panels so that's our 20 pieces so that's our panels uploaded and ready to be manufactured but there's another little feature here we can take a look at there's actually a Gerber viewer feature that we can take a look at so let's just check that out while we're here so you hit the plus symbol in the middle of the screen you select your file and up comes our Gerbers and it's a pretty good viewer we can select the different layers on our PCB we can individually hide them or show them if you want so that's pretty useful if you just want to check that all your layers kind of look correct and it's probably similar enough to what PCB we are going to see when they open up their software so that's pretty handy well now all that's left to do is wait for our PCBs to be manufactured and assembled so in a couple of weeks time we should get it packaged and We'll just unbox it and check that our design is going to work properly. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video and now you have some idea how to set your PCBs up so that you can get them uh, manufactured. Well, that's all from me for this week. So if you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button. That always helps. And that's pretty much everything. So thanks very much for watching.